All right, hi everyone. I'm sure by this time you are hoping that this sign said goodbye Vegas. <laughs> You're almost there. <laughs> uh, before, we talk, we, before we dive into the session today, we're gonna talk a little bit about travel. It's something that Blair and I love to do um, and something that you guys all did coming here, so we really, really appreciate that. Um, you know, travel experiences aren't always the best. Um, coming out here, who had like a seamless travel experience? No flight delays, no lost bag, no middle seats? Okay. <laughs> All right, who had some issues? I had some issues. I, had some issues. I was coming from Chicago. We had a snowstorm on, on Monday. O'Hare was a treat. Um, so, you know, travel, you don't always have visibility into where your baggage is coming from. You don't always um, you know, trust if your flight will be on time. And it can be complicated. Um, you know, data has similar challenges. Um, and that's really what we're here to talk about today, is extending your data catalog into Tableau and making it so your data doesn't have to be that complicated. Um, I'm with my colleague, Blair Hutchinson. Uh, Blair and I work on the technology partners team here at Tableau. So we have about 300 plus technology partners that we build integrated solutions with and take them to market. Blair's on the product side um, and I'm his counterpart on the product marketing side. So a little bit about Blair. Um, Blair, when he travels, he likes to do outdoorsy stuff. Here he's on the top of Grand Teton? Teton, yeah. Teton. Um, and he, uh, he moonlights as a mountain guide in the summertime in the Pacific Northwest. So if you ever find yourself in Mount Rainier, you know, maybe he'll be your guide. Blair's a lot cooler than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what's cool about this picture is not me standing on the top doing a yoga pose or whatever I'm doing. Um, it's actually the person behind the screen. It was my 55-year-old mother who climbed it for the first time. Um, so Mary Grace also loves to travel. And when she's not spending time in Chicago's airport, <laughs> she's, um, you're on the, where are you on this photo? Um, um, Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore. And behind the, the, the camera on this one is Captain Hook or something, right? <laughs> So what we, um, what Blair and I want you guys to walk away with today is just an understanding of why a catalog is so important, and if you already have one, how you can have a more seamless experience extending that into Tableau. Um, so the agenda today, we'll talk about just some cataloging concepts in general. We'll do a brief overview of the Tableau catalog. Show of hands, who is using Tableau catalog today? or has used it. Wow, all right. Um, then we'll talk about our ex integrations that we have with our awesome partners in this space, partners like Alation. Um, who is using a partner catalog? So Alation, Alteryx, Informatica, Calibra. Okay, um, all right, awesome. Um, and then who, who has their own catalog, maybe a homegrown solution that they're using right now? Couple of people, okay. All right, super helpful. All right, so this um, is actually a screenshot of my phone that I took um, a couple weeks ago. I was traveling from Philadelphia to Los Angeles, um, and I was psyched. Mobile app says flight is on time. You know, was ready to go get some sunshine in LA, and then the text messages start coming in. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So my app was saying one thing, flight was on time, but the SMSs coming through were saying something else. So maybe there was some kind of data quality issue, maybe the data wasn't syncing, maybe it was two different data sources that were fueling these alerts and communications. All I knew is that I was starting to not trust either one. And we know that this feeling of untrust isn't relegated to travel experiences alone. So here, you know, I'm looking at two visualizations, and I think they're the same. 
They are talking about product sales by category over the past couple years. But then when I start looking at them, I actually notice some, some nuances and some differences. So there's a spike there in 2016, which is not on the other viz, so that's weird. Kind of a smaller one in the middle. So then I get that same kind of feeling of can I trust this data? Like where is it coming from? Why are they, why are they different? I thought this was coming from the same source. Who owns this data? What other workbooks is this fueling? So that same kind of mistrust is, is happening again. In this particular example, it actually stems from the business glossary. So the sales on the right is a contiguous United States, so everything except for Alaska and Hawaii. Sales on the left includes those two states, and that's why you see some spikes in sales. So pretty subtle, but because I didn't know that, I just immediately distrusted what I was seeing. And so that's really why you know, data catalogs are so important. It's, you know, a catalog is essentially an inventory of your metadata presented into a way, into an intuitive interface that you can easily understand. And so a data catalog can do a couple things. One, just give you the description of what the data is, how those terms are defined enterprise-wide, shows you where the data is coming from, what, what databases, what tables, who owns it, who's last updated it, who has certified it. And then in this particular one, I can see that there's two quality, data quality issues happening as well. So I can understand is this data set under maintenance um, or you know, alerting me that something might not be right. So what makes a good catalog? Really there's kind of three um, important facets that we see um, in terms of, of a solid data catalog. The first is visibility, just an understanding of those assets, um, what they are and who owns them. Um, the second is discoverability. So are they automatically indexed? Is it easy to find the relevant data sources that you need? Um, and then finally and most importantly is, is trust. You know, am I confident in this data asset that it's up to date, um, that it's certified? And so, you know, why, why are we talking about this today? Well, I'm sure you guys have heard kind of throughout the, the conference this idea of a data culture. It's something we really believe at Tableau. We want to empower everybody in the organization to be able to do self-service analytics. In order to do that, they need to trust the data that they're working with. Um, and, you know, Gartner agrees and sees this as well, um, saying that by next year, enterprises will more than double their investment in metadata management solutions. Um, but really, it comes down to our customers, too. You know, today, um, our customers, you know, I think this group is probably representative. Um, some are using partner catalogs, some using homegrown solutions, um, but a lot aren't using a catalog at all. Uh, and that's really why we launched the Tableau catalog, to bring this capability to um, everybody in the organization, not just those are, that are managing data, but those that are interacting with the data on a daily basis. Okay, so since I think we would all benefit from taking a closer look at the, ca the Tableau catalog, let's jump into a quick demo to just kind of all get on the same page about what we're talking about. So this is not gonna be an in-depth demo of everything that the data catalog has to offer. There are actually some really great sessions and on-demand videos if you guys wanna look at that afterwards. But I'm gonna highlight just some key points as it's kind of relevant for what we're talking about today. So we'll start off at a dashboard. And just like Mary Grace was talking about earlier, we wanna understand what's fueling this dashboard. If this is the first time that I've seen this, do I trust it? Where's the data coming from? Who, who created it? Who's the steward of this data set? And with the data catalog, once you enable the, metadata, uh, the data management add-on, you have the ability to quickly open up the data details. And so in the data details, we get information about the data source. We can 
click into any of the fields that are in use. So if there's a calculated field, and I want to understand maybe how that's being used in the context of this data set, I could click into this and get an understanding of what that if-then statement is looking like. I also notice that this live connection to our Superstore transactions data has a data quality warning. So if I click into this data quality warning, it looks like there's an underlying table that is undergoing some maintenance. And so let's double click into that and see where in the process that table is affecting this data source and if it's relevant for, for this data, this um, dashboard that I'm looking at. So when we click into the data source itself, on the left-hand side, or kind of in the middle here, we're getting all of the names of the fields that are being used by this data set. And we also have some metadata associated with it, right? So we've got some uh, a, kind of a glossary, some descriptions describing what customer segment means in the context of this data set. On the right-hand side, we have our lineage um, information. And so I'm seeing this in the context now of this Superstore transactions. So as I look, look at the, the assets downstream, I see that it's connected to 45 different workbooks, 304 sheets that are actually pulling from this data source. And if I click into this, I can now, I'm still seeing this in the context of that transaction or that Superstore transactions and can actually go and explore that if I wanted to. And I can also go the other way. So now if I'm, if I'm trying to uncover that uh, data quality warning, I can now traverse up to the tables and now I can see with this little indicator, it looks like this is the table that is undergoing some maintenance, right? I can also see this little um, checkbox here that this is actually a certified data source. So if I click into here, right, I'm getting more metadata. I've got more descriptions about these tables that are upstream of this data source that we were initially looking at. And there we go. I certified this a few days ago, it looks like. So it's a little bit of a taste, a little bit of a teaser into what you can expect with the data catalog. I'm not going to go into a whole much more detail than that. But let's talk about if you have a data catalog now, how can you actually extract all of that information into Tableau and vice versa? Because in a lot of customer scenarios that we're seeing, manually inputting all of that information into the Tableau data catalog is not necessarily the approach that they're looking to take. So let's think about ways that we can actually automate that so that it scales um, into the data catalog. So let's look at an analogy. So um, we're, we're kind of continuing with this travel theme here. So we've, we're looking at um, Kayak and we're also looking at Delta Airlines. Kayak, of course, if you're not familiar with it, surfaces up all the great deals for various flights. So in this case, I'm looking to go to Las Vegas and I'm trying to figure out what the cheapest flight is to get me there on a particular day. Well, now, that information is synced up with Delta Airlines. So if I see a, a great deal on Kayak and I want to go purchase those flights and I get taken to Delta, and all of a sudden that seat's not available, um, maybe the price has changed, well, how, much, how likely am I to actually go to Kayak a second time? The fact that those two aren't syncing makes it frustrating as an end user to really kind of know what, what I'm supposed to be able to expect and vice versa, right? So if I'm looking at Delta and I'm not seeing information there that shows up in Kayak, that, that, um, that Delta there, <laughs> I'm talking about Delta Airlines, um, <laughs> is, is, is confusing and, and kind of, it, 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 it prevents us from trusting what, what it is that we're seeing. So now let's talk about how we can actually sync up those internal catalogs with our Tableau server catalogs. So let's start by talking about reading from the Tableau catalog and getting that into an external system. And before we go into that, we also kind of need to talk about what this experience was like before. Because 
We've drastically changed how we do this now with uh, the new metadata API, which is what we'll, we'll talk about. So beforehand, there were three different things that I needed to do to extract metadata. The first is that I needed to maybe go access my Postgres database. That's where I'd find all of the user information. If I wanted to find out um, what the ID is for that workbook, I needed to go access my Postgres database. I then needed to pull all of those workbooks and data sources down from Tableau Server using the REST API. And then I had to crack all of those open, look at the XML, and scrape all that information out to pull it into that system. So things like calculated fields and um, what data source that workbook is connected to, that's how I would get that information. Now that is totally unsupported though, and if Tableau made any underlying change to its XML in any future release, then your whole process of getting metadata from Tableau would break. So now we've got this shiny new plane, and it's called our metadata API. So now, with the catalog, what you're seeing is just kind of the shiny skin to the technology that's underlying um, any, any release after 2019.3. So the metadata API is cataloging all of the information that comes into Tableau Server, and it's storing it in a graph database. So anything that comes into Tableau Server is now going to be indexed and available using the, graph, um, the GraphQL API. So the benefit of this now is there's no more need for that unsupported XML scraping, and you can really easily write um, write queries to get that information into your own source system. So just to kind of solidify what this would look like, this is my internal catalog. I have a number of different asset types. I've got different resources. In this case, I don't have anything from Tableau Server yet. So this is just a very simple example of maybe what an internal catalog might look like. Now, once I pull the information using the metadata API, now, very simple, now we've seen, now we see that the, the views, dashboards, tables, and data sources, those now are all cataloged in, the, in the, our internal catalog. So now let's talk about going the other way. So now we wanna sync up the information that's in our internal catalog with Tableau Server. So some of the examples that we touched on in the demo of why we might wanna do this is to get things like data quality warnings, certifications, and descriptions uploaded into Tableau Server. So for that, let's kind of take a dive into what that might look like. So this is actually now we're gonna be using another API. We're gonna be using our REST API to, to push that information up to Tableau Server. And before we look at that, let's take a look at just what's in our, our, our Tableau catalog, or our internal catalog. So we have a number of different assets. Um, if I click into, so right, so this is, this is my very oversimplified example of what an internal catalog might look like. So if I click into my tables, I've got these great descriptions. And if I click into one of these tables, I've also got things like the database name, the database connection, who owns it and who it's certified by. In this case, the Iceman. Um, and we also have all of these, this glossary of information around um, the different fields. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take this information and push it up to the Tableau, the Tableau catalog. So for that, I've actually written a little script, and we're not gonna dive into what this, what this is actually all about. But this script, I'm gonna run this, and it's gonna sync up with uh, Tableau Server. And so let's take a look at what's on Tableau Server right now. So we have those assets that are uploaded, but we only have, we have four in my internal catalog, but I've got a total of six on Tableau Server. If I click into this storm data set, we don't have any descriptions, it's not certified. Um, there's no data quality warnings that I've seen for any of these tables yet. So if we run this code, 
Great, so now we've checked off, we've, we've brought in the, the right information here. And if we just refresh this page, we'll go back to our external assets to see the tables. So now we can see, okay, great, so we've got, it's certified by the Iceman, so that's consistent with our internal catalog. We've got this green little checkbox to signify that that's, that's been done, and we have just a quick description of, of how that took place, right? So if people are wondering um, how that information got there, they can quickly take a peek with that description. And if we click into that storm data set where we didn't have any of that, that, uh, those descriptions, now we've got that all loaded up. And now someone could either start from either place and they've got the same information when they're going to create a dashboard or if they're looking to justify what it is that they're seeing um, uh, in Tableau Server. So this integration is actually being used by a number of our um, Tableau catalog partners. So Informatica, the Google Cloud, Calibra, Alteryx, and Alation. I could stand up here and actually talk a lot about the, the great benefits to working with any of these partners. They've all actually adopted the new technique of, of in, in, uh, exporting information from Tableau Server using the metadata API, and we're partnering really closely with them to also get that two-way communication so that information is also gonna be consistent on the Tableau catalog should you decide to turn on the, uh, the data management add-on. So, you know, sometimes we get asked the question, well, if, you know, we already have a catalog, why would we use the Tableau catalog? And, you know, Blair showed you, obviously, the example of ensuring that kind of seamless two-way dialogue between the two. Um, you know, other reasons are to expand benefits beyond IT. So, kind of historically, data management solutions really were in the purview of kind of the site admin who was, you know, managing permissions and things like that. Um, whereas, you know, if you extend your, you know, existing catalog into Tableau, now you're opening up to a brand new group of users, those who are actually, you know, interacting with the data. Um, this one is really, really critical. So, um, you know, Tableau catalog catalogs data on Tableau server, but our customers have data everywhere. And that's why our partner catalogs are so important because they are helping catalog all of an enterprise's data and then utilizing the metadata API to seamlessly integrate that with Tableau. Um, and then finally, kind of bringing metadata to the point of analysis. You know, you can really have Tableau Catalog really kind of be that kind of destination hub for all of your metadata, surfacing up to those business users who are the ones that are kind of on the front lines asking questions of, of their data. So a couple things to think about, um, you know, when you leave the conference today is, um, you know, I don't think anyone really raised their hand when I asked if you were using Tableau Catalog. Um, so if this is something that you want to explore, um, definitely, you know, trial it. Um, you know, some things to think about if this is right for your organization or not is, um, one, you know, your team. Is, typically, customers are really successful with Catalog when they have larger deployments of Tableau, a good amount of creators and explorers, um, lots and lots of distributed data sets um, because there's just more of a need to manage and govern that, that data. Um, technology, so I think we hit this point a couple times today, is you know, if you have an existing catalog, um, that's actually a really good reason to use Tableau Catalog because you can extend the value of your existing catalog and already leverage that existing glossary that you spent time pulling together. Um, and then most importantly is, is that trust factor as well. You know, at the end of the day, it's about making better business decisions. Um, you know, your business users don't want to spend their time questioning the validity of the data. Um, you know, your IT folks don't want to spend their time managing index schedules. Um, so by, you know, having the Tableau catalog to really act as that, um, you know, overall inventory for your metadata on Tableau server, 
um, you know, you can spend a lot more time doing the things you want to do and not kind of dealing with these um, monotonous data tasks. So with that, um, thank you for traveling with Blair and I today.